But I think overriding all of this is where are we heading? Because we know where the Dutch is going. And anyone in here, whether on that side or this side or that side, can't see the Dutch agenda and where they are heading, then your head is in the sand. Your head is in the sand. And the question is, what is our plan? What is St. Martin's plan? What is it we want? Because to, between 2000 and 2010, all of us, whether we were government or opposition, wanted St. Martin to become a country. But have we dropped the ball? Did we give it away? Are we allowing the Dutch government to take it from us? Because we were hit by a hurricane. The same Dutch government that goes when Dominica had their rainfall and their flooding. They went and they helped. And that was a campaign to get a vote for the UN security seat. Talk about vote buying. They were sponsoring things left and right. I was invited to a forum in Aruba. And when I went there, and there were people from all parts of the globe that I didn't even remember from in my school days, knowing where these countries were. And we're like, but how they got here for a conference in Aruba? And then you find out the Dutch government paid for it. And then there were events in Santo Domingo. And who sponsored it? The Dutch government. Because they were campaigning for that seat on the UN Security Council. But now when you are dealing with your own, one of your countries in the kingdom, you can't give them assistance, you can't help them unless you squeeze them and bring them to their knees. When I hear the Minister of Finance talking about the amount of debt we will be in, it is almost like, you see why I do? We got all this debt. If I don't tighten our belt, and if I don't do this and don't do that, we're going to have more debt. But where some of the debt is coming from? What could have been assistance? Because they give Dominica not one million, not two, three, or 30 million. Google it and find out. Google it and find out. Okay? Give Dominica bags of money. How many conditions? Zero. Zero. And if I'm sure Dominica pick up the phone and call them and say, boo, we got some problems. We still need a little 10 million. It's going to. It is going to. Because in exchange, they can get a vote. They have an ally. They have a partner in the UN. But St. Martin ain't no ally. St. Martin ain't no partner. Because we give St. Martin a trip to be on our delegation, and they're one of us. And when something happened to them, treat them worse than you treat your own children. Because no mother, no father would do that to their child. And now they gave you a loan to pay police officers who they sent here to help us. But they are concerned about our debt. When we had balanced budgets, when we had an approved 38 million guilders for capital expense, and when we went to request the loan so we can start doing what we set out to do, the same Dutch government said, had the CFT advised them, no, 38 million guilders, we approve it here, but it's too much. We don't think you guys can use that amount of money. You can't use that amount of money. We fix in prison for. I postpone these things. Only borrow. We don't think you, you should borrow more than 20 million. But today, rather than giving you, like they gave Dominica, they're lending it to you with conditions. The only condition that should come with a loan is this is the percentage point, and I want you to pay it back 
within 10 years, five years, or eight years, I give you a grace period um, for five years or for six years or for 10 years. But not no condition on that's yours, give it to me. That's yours, give it to me. That's yours, give it to me. And if we wanted to go on the market and get a loan free of those conditions, we would not allow to because we're in the kingdom. And we can't get a loan outside unless we go through them. And unless CFT approves of the loan. So CFT is giving support to a loan by the Dutch government that will sink St. Martin even deeper in debt, making it impossible for us to crawl out of that barrel of debt. And then the minister's proud to basically tell us that he discovered the amount of debt we are in. You all better do something about it. And guess what? That brings me to another topic. When I always say we got to decide where we are going, what is our priority? Not the Dutch president, state secretary, Knops. Not his priority. His agenda could never be the same as ours. I'm sure the man had never been on St. Martin before the hurricane. And now he becomes a St. Martin expert. He knows what is good for St. Martin. Before the hurricane, with balanced budgets and budgets submitted on time, and a surplus projected in 2017, just before the hurricane, I was with a delegation at the USA Department. And we successfully negotiated the preclearance for St. Martin. And there was an upbeat tempo in St. Martin. Throughout the community and stakeholders, people were happy because something great was coming to St. Martin. Pre-clearance, pre-U.S. clearance in St. Martin or in the Caribbean is something every Caribbean country would want. From St. Kitts to Antigua to Barbados to St. Lucia, all of them, we have once again become the envy of the Caribbean. We were not number one now. We occupied the first, the second, and the third spot. And the next one would come probably in the fifth place because the fourth was even left vacant. They were envious. And would that help our economy? Oh, hell yes. Oh, yes. It would help us. It would help position St. Martin at the front lines once again. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. <laughs> Professor Gert Oost-Indy from the Netherlands 
And the way the academia is set up in the Netherlands is that you have one person who is the expert. So in the Netherlands, if you want to study anything that has to do with the Caribbean, you have to go through him, right? He's like the way, the truth, and the light, you know? He's the Messiah. And, um, and he, in, in 2015, made some expressions about reparations. Uh, this was only a couple of years or a year after the committee was set up in the CARICOM. And he, Professor Hertos Indy of the Royal Institute of Southeast Asian and Caribbean Studies of the University of Leiden, he says, don't waste your time. Uh, Europeans will not pay out the money. Uh, but he did not delve into the other aspects of reparations. And I would say that he did not do that simply because he does not have the theoretical tools to understand the purpose of reparations. But nearly three years ago, a research program was set up at the University of Glasgow in Scotland, in the UK. And this program was set up to conduct scientific research into how the university, which is over 500 years old, profited and was linked to the slave trade. So they come up with a report entitled Slavery, Abolition, and the University of Glasgow Report, and it was published in 2018. And so Professor Newman and Professor Mullen, both from the University of Glasgow, uh, they had a year-long investigation into the bequests, support, and other ways the university might have benefited from slavery wealth. Yeah? It estimates that present day value of all the monies given to the university, which might have been full or partly derived from slavery, to be in the order of tens of millions of pounds, depending on the indexation formula. So according to one article in The Guardian, one of the most notorious Scottish slave masters, and there were many here in the Caribbean, um, he comes out in the report, Robert Cunningham Graham, on his return to Scotland after 20 years as a slaver, became a politician, a poet, and eventually the rector of the University of Glasgow. So after this investigation, the university has agreed on a program of reparatory, reparato, sorry, reparato, <laughs> the word reparative justice, which includes the creation of a center for study on slavery and a memorial tribute at the university in name of the enslaved. The University of Glasgow is now working with the University of the West Indies huh, and is now working on an MOU to foster relations between the two institutions to facilitate uh, the further investigation into slavery and its legacy. And I think that the university here plays an important role. Why? Right? Because all that slavery, all that colonialism in that history, just like other aspects of our society, it was decided upon at the university. So the governments, the wealthy, the adventurers, they depended on the university to make sure that all of society understood upon the, the basis upon which slavery existed. This is what we call scientific racism, which was later developed. And after the abolition of slavery, scientific racism was continuously endorsed during the colonial period. And some people in some places still adhere to the tenets of scientific racism. Hey ma, how are you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is? <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want, I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. 
but I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, Ma. I'll get online with Vib now. Alright, darling. You know who you're for? <laughs> Contact Wib today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices, the Winwood Islands Bank, now your online banking partner in progress. It's entitled that a US-based private company embarrasses the Dutch government. Why we say that the Dutch government should be ashamed? What a US-based American private company presented in Parliament a few weeks ago, a proposal to build upon indication of Romy, 10,000 container homes, completely pre-financed by the company's financiers. The Dutch could have done a long time. We have taken note of the questions and criticism in Parliament and in local news media, where on details of the proposal of the American company, suggestions were made to improve such a project, to make it feasible to build back better and stronger in the St. Martin context. Not that the Dutch cannot present a 15,000 homes project, where they show off with a record of 62,000 new built homes in 2017, we think that the Dutch have the finances to finance the sum of 75 million US dollars for the 15,000 homes. They have the capacity, but they do not care for the poor and the needy households who were in poor housing conditions already before the hurricane. Irma has exposed these poor housing conditions in the kingdom by devastating and structurally damaging these 13 to 15,000 homes. It is not only a moral obligation for, for the Dutch government as kingdom partner to build these 15,000 homes. It is a legal obligation that they have since 1979 when they have ratified the Treaty of the International Covenant for Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Why we say it is their legal obligation? It is based on Article 2 of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, an obligation of the kingdom government to provide with all means possible in the kingdom the adequate housing needed for the poor and the needy to comply with Article 11 of the same covenant, which is the right to an adequate standard of living for one's health and well-being and that of one's family. It is based on Article 43 of the Charter of the Kingdom that both the local government and the Dutch government have to guarantee that all human rights, including the right to adequate housing, is realized and guaranteed. The St. Martin government also has a legal obligation to realize the right to adequate housing for the poor and the needy households in St. Martin. As Article 81b of the State Arrangement of St. Martin stipulates that the treaties ratified by the Kingdom are part of the legislation applicable in St. Martin, the need for adequate housing had to be in the 2019 budget presented to Parliament. The National Recovery and Resilience Plan came out last year in 2018, and it is clearly outlined the need for social housing. 
to be built back better and stronger. So based on Article 4.2 and 4.3 of the Accountability National Ordinance, the funds needed for the social housing had to be budgeted for an estimated amount of 1,500 million Antillian guilders. And the funds had to be granted by the Dutch government, who has the most means in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It is clearly stated in these articles how the budget has to reflect the cooperative resources from the Netherlands. So now that the CFT and the Kingdom government, read Dutch government, has restricted the 2019 budget for St. Martin so that it cannot include the real development need of social housing now, it is up to Parliament to provide the amendment to comply with all the above mentioned legal regulations applicable in St. Martin. What will our MPs do? What will the Council of Ministers do? Will they still execute what the Dutch government tells them to do? Or will they stand up for the rights of the poor and the needy people they have to represent and put the Dutch to comply with the human rights of our people in the Kingdom of the Netherlands? St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina and I play football with the Walichi Roma soccer team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and we help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sports. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter. Hashtag are you in? Last week, I had the opportunity to mention about some of the laws that we have been able to pass recently in the Council of Ministers, and yesterday was no different. We passed the final one, which is the Ordinance to Amend Book 2 of the Civil Code. I want to mention that the three laws that have been passed are the Ordinance to Amend the Penal Code, the Ordinance to Amend the Penal Procedure Code, and yesterday was the Ordinance to Amend Book 2 of the Civil Code. These ordinances now have to be debated and hopefully adopted in Parliament, but also implemented by September. The Ministry and I are in touch with all the stakeholders, and hopefully we will be in time, because we also have to translate them into English, and they also have to be vetted by the CFATF. This will allow us, this will allow us to meet the CFATF plenary deadline, and in so doing, avoid any night any international negative public statement. The work is not done yet, and we will still have to put forward our best efforts and make sure that the parliamentarians also clear these legislative hurdles. The PowerPoint presentation that I will be given on Monday for the public debate of the budget will be available on our Facebook page. I encourage you to go there and See for yourself what is being done in the Ministry of Justice. On the um, concerns of MP Bryson about UTS and not receiving answers to his uh, questions, uh, 
that he has uh, submitted based on his initiative law. Uh, can any one of the ministers, I know uh, Minister De Weaver is the representative of UTS, um, uh, can you give an idea of what is happening to that question and what exactly is the hold up to Mr. Bryson's um, request? Thank you for your question, Ms. Singh. The Minister of Finance is the one actually responsible for the sale of any government um, assets. Uh, he is busy with that and he will be making a statement regarding that matter. Thank you. Thank you, Minister De Weaver. Stephen, you have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach, uh, Minister of VSA, Emily. Uh, Minister, earlier on you spoke of the fact that you met with the representatives of um, FCCA and one of the points discussed discuss was that of employment. Um, we know following the passing of hurricanes Irma and Maria back in 2017, an appeal was also made to FCCA to have St. Martiners employed on board the various ships. How many persons were employed then? Um, Stephen, thanks for the question. Um, unfortunately, it isn't something that I would have access to in terms of the, of the numbers. And even the um, FCCA, I'm not sure that they would have those numbers because they don't really track employment for their different members. So remember, the FCCA is an association of the various cruise lines. And I don't think the cruise lines have a responsibility to report back to the association on those numbers. It's something I can ask, but... Um, I'm sort of skeptical as to whether there is really that, that number. But remember, what we're talking about is exactly um, how do we facilitate that process in, in order to make it easier. Because one of the things they did express in our conversation was without that clarity, um, they've had instances where employees have used different legal jurisdictions when there was a, an issue, and that created a real confusion for them. And that's why this addressing of the seafarer legislation is an important part of facilitating